How's it going, everyone? Hope all's well. Thank you for attending today's uh, webinar. Uh, we'll just wait for a few seconds um, for everyone to be settled in, and um, and we'll get the the show on its the presentation on its on its own. So, um, and, and, and before we start, um, there's going to be some some polls available for you. Um, so by all means, feel free to to answer and respond to them, um, as this will be able to assist us in answering any questions, additional workshops and presentations for you as well. Um, also, some housekeeping items. The the um, the presentation it will be emailed to you, um, as as well as the link to the YouTube page as well. So um, as a reference point, um, in case if you miss a particular slide or have to step out for a phone call, by all means, um, you know we're here to assist you at any way we can. We're here. We're family. I'm more than happy to assist you any way we can. So. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jesus Padilla. I am the program manager of the Florida SBDC at FIU, and I thank you for attending today's um, presentation. Um, a brief description of the Florida SBDC network. Um, we're your local SBDC center if your business is located here in Miami-Dade, Monroe County. If your business is located elsewhere, we'll be more than happy to connect you with our um, colleagues from, from your particular SBDC center to assist with your small business needs. Um, some of our services is uh, access to capital, marketing, international trade, how to start your own business, um, cash flow, financial management, um, and all of our services is no cost and confidential to you. In part of um, this, um, this webinar, um, we are excited to be under this uh, program under the Miami Foundation, which is funded by JP Morgan Chase. Um, part of this uh, initiative is called the Building Prosperity Initiative that assist um, um, to provide presentations and, and assistance to small businesses as such yourselves throughout Miami-Dade County. Um, in, in doing so, we have partnered up with a great organization, um, Isca Prospera, and uh, they'll be more than happy to provide you some additional information on how we could all collaborate as one team, one goal um, for your business growth assistance. So I have uh, Soledad uh, Jacobson from Prospera that she'll give more information on how Prospera can help your businesses. Thank you so much, Jesus, for that warm introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Soledad Jacobson. I'm Business Development Consultant and Community Relations at Prospera. As uh, my colleague just mentioned, this wonderful initiative started one year ago, uh, but since way before, we have already been collaborating with the SBDC. I would like to thank once again the Miami Foundation, JP Morgan Chase, to uh, believe in us, to support us, uh, because this is our there's like a great need for our small business owners and entrepreneurs uh, to continue to get education, to continue to get that ongoing business consulting. So that's part of the different services that we, we have at Prospera. Uh, I would say we have four different pillar of services that we that um, give us the opportunity to continue to support you. So we do have our uh, educational different webinars and workshops uh, that are presented in Spanish. And we have identified the different topics that are really relevant for small business owners for that continuing education. We also have our business consulting where we meet with uh, the entrepreneurs and the business owners. We identify the different needs, the different opportunities that are out there with you. And we guide you throughout that journey, beautiful journey on how to uh, start a business or also expanding your business. We also do in addition of that uh, access to capital. Although we are not an, an financial institution, we do have different resources and relationships with both financial institutions and also uh, CDFIs, micro lending institutions, so that that's part of the support that we, we give you. And also we have our unique program, our business grant program. So if you are looking for a uh, business plan for your company, a marketing plan, or today we will hear more about QuickBooks, that's one of the business grants that we do have available. And the way it works, uh, Prospera will pay for an external provider to, for you to get that business grant uh, free of charge. So again, I'm really happy uh, in the interest of time uh, I will go back to uh, Jesus with my colleague, but I'm here to answer any questions. And I will also put under the chat my contact information.
So uh, it's my pleasure to introduce a great, great specialist here in town, Jasnai. Uh, the floor is all yours. I think uh, all the attendees are waiting for your presentation. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. I've been paying attention to the responses on the poll. Thank you for participating. I see over 90% of the participants today are not current SBDC clients. So it's a pleasure for you to be part of this presentation. It's just one of the topics that we can support you with as part of SBDC at FIU. QuickBooks Online, this is a topic that's very special to me, very close to my heart. I'm one of the consultants at the SBDC at FIU Center, and I specialize in QuickBooks and the overall cash flow management. So today, I only have one hour, and this is the topic that I could be talking for days and months. <laughs> really, there is a lot that you can get out of this tool, but I want to point out the main tools to make QuickBooks work for you. I see most of the participants are also new businesses, so you could learn how you can start managing your numbers from the get-go. The earlier you start getting your numbers under control, the better, because as you grow, it gets more complicated. So thank you all for participating. One of the things I will ask you even though it was not in the poll, if you could interact in the chat and just mention for those of you that are already in business, are you already using QuickBooks online? Just put yes or no. And that will give me an idea of what to focus on. Okay. This quick, this workshop can be as basic as intermediate or as advanced as we want it to be. So I want to point, point out uh, the tools that are going to be adaptable to our audience. So I see no, no, yes, no. Feel free to continue responding. And if I see that most of you are new to QuickBooks, I will uh, keep that in mind as well. All right. So let me escape from here for a second. And... I'm going to share my presentation. All right, so what are we seeing right now? Are we seeing the PowerPoint? Yeah, I'm gonna leave it in this format, even though, uh, you know, it's not the presentation format, but for some reason, my screen, when I put it to present, it puts it big and it doesn't let me see the other windows. So I'm just gonna leave it in this format if you all can see it. So again, yes, I'm Talbot here to serve you. Today, we're gonna be covering the main versions of QuickBooks, the main difference between QuickBooks Online and Desktop, so you are aware of what your options are, what are the main features, some of the recommendations and resources, and I'm, we're going to be leaving time at the end to answer your questions. But as I go through the presentation, if you have questions, feel free to post them, and we will address them at the end. All right? So first of all, what is the main difference between the desktop and the online? And with this, I'm going to give you a quick update of what's happening with desktop version starting in 2022. QuickBooks desktop, you know, in the old days, we used to go to Office Depot and buy the CD and put it on the computer and use our QuickBooks for five years, no problem, right? Now we see that the QuickBooks online version is a monthly subscription. So we're kind of renting 
the space, right? Everything is on the cloud. You don't need backup or anything, but it's a subscription. Like we pay for Netflix or Disney Plus. The subscription model is, is where the world is heading in, in the service industry. In the desktop, that version that we used to do in a city doesn't exist anymore. Many computers don't even have a place to put a CD. So now you download it, right, on the computer. With the desktop version, you could use it for multiple years without having to buy a subscription. Until, I think sometime in November this year. Starting in 2022, QuickBooks Desktop is moving to the subscription model as well. You're gonna have to pay an annual subscription to keep your desktop going, to keep receiving support from QuickBooks and to have the integrations. It doesn't mean that your current desktop version is gonna stop working, but QuickBooks is gonna give you three more years to provide support. It's gonna give you three more years for other tools to integrate. So if you have the bank feeds, the payroll, all of that, working with your pet with your desktop is going to stop working after three years so in 2024 that's it again it doesn't mean that your desktop doesn't work anymore it will but you're not going to get the updates or the support from quickbooks so with this and i don't have a preference for one or the other those are very good too but i am certified in quickbooks online and today's presentation the tools and how to use it i'm going to focus in quickbooks online because it's what i have readily available to show you how to use it. the main difference between quickbooks online and desktop as i mentioned quickbooks is online is on the cloud desktop you have it on your computer and you could integrate it with other tools, you could have it accessible from the cloud, but at an additional cost, okay? QuickBooks Online has an app. From your phone, you could use most of the tools that you could use from the computer. It makes it very mobile, very accessible, very easy to keep track of everything. I use the, the QuickBooks app a lot to take pictures of the receipts because it automatically syncs and I don't have the shoebox anymore <laughs> for my own business. And I really recommend uh, entrepreneurs to get rid of the shoebox, <laughs> all right? Uh, one of the main advantages really of QuickBooks Online is the banking integration. This is, you know, when you think of your bookkeeping, I don't want you to see it anymore as having to print your bank statements, highlight them, write down what the expense was about, send it to your accountant. It's a nightmare, right? So with QuickBooks Online, it has the feature to automatically sync it to your bank. And I'll be showing you how you use that. And bring all the transactions so you don't have to do that entry anymore. You could do it with bank accounts, checking, savings, credit cards, PayPal, everything integrated. Again, all the transactions from the bank come into QuickBooks and from there, you classify them accordingly. So you could also make them automatic. You can create rules. So those recurring transactions are going to automatically be classified. This is one of the best features that QuickBooks Online has and what makes you save a lot of time and energy, okay? Now, another difference between online and desktop, QuickBooks Online is only one company per subscription. And I know for the desktop, not sure if it's gonna change starting next year, but you could have up to five companies with the same uh, purchase back then. And when it comes to the, integrations, the complex tools for whether it's inventory, if you want to sync it to your website, if you want to integrate Square or WooCommerce or Stripe, and those of you that have a website might know about the tools that I'm mentioning, 
With QuickBooks Online, you can integrate them through apps. So it has applications to sync with a lot of apps, all right? Uh, with desktop, it has some features integrated, but the rest is not gonna be there. So this is the main thing. Today, again, the objectives are listed here, but the focus is gonna be mainly give you the main tools that are gonna help you make QuickBooks work for you. We're gonna be talking about the short term accounts, the banking features, the rules, how you can use tags, classes, and locations, the QuickBooks cash and QuickBooks payments. And this is a super, I'm super excited about this tool and I'll be showing you why. Projects, I saw in the attendees registration list, how some of your business were in construction, in services, Projects is extremely useful tool for you to take a, you know, look at your profit margins and really keep track of your profitability per project. We're going to be talking about the feature of payroll and most importantly, financials and managerial reports. This is why we take the time to do bookkeeping, right? So first of all, and I'll be sharing some resources later on but let me take you to the quickbooks online website so you can really see what your options are and i'll be sharing a link actually let me open up the site using that link so you see how it's gonna look for you because through sbdc rfiu you could use a specific code um, that is going to give you an additional discount. When you go to QuickBooks Online, the regular website, you're gonna mostly get 50% off for three months, right? But when you use this link that we're sharing with you, you're gonna get 30% off for 12 months. And in addition, you're gonna have a 30 day trial period. When you go to the regular website, you have to choose whether it's the trial or the 50%. And 50% might sound like it's a better deal, but think of it, it's three months versus 12. So if you are new to QuickBooks and you're trying to test that, I encourage you to use this link so you can do the trial and you could take advantage of the discount, okay? and I will be posting the link here to all the attendees. So let me walk you really quickly here. What are the different versions of QuickBooks Online? Simple start, it does what pretty much what any small business needs to keep track of the numbers. Income expenses, your 1099 contractors, you can send estimates, invoices, track the mileage, manage your cash flow. When do you need to go to the next level? When you want to include more users because Simple Star is limited to one. So if you want to include more, um, why would you want to have more users? Really, you don't want to be sharing passwords. And I'm going to show you a tool, it's called the audit log, where you can see what every single thing that happened within QuickBooks and who did what. And for that, you need different users so you can have some sort of control, right? If you can manage and pay your bills directly from QuickBooks. So if you want to enter bills, if you want to pay your vendors from QuickBooks, you will need the essential for that. And time tracking. Time tracking, this tool used to be called T-Sheets, QuickBooks Bob T-Sheets, and now it's called QuickBooks Time. And they integrated it with the subscription starting in essentials. Time tracking is an amazing tool. I'm using it as we speak. I use it every day because time is our most valuable asset. And as an entrepreneur, you want to know where your time is going so you can make decisions accordingly. So you can delegate and know how many hours of what you're looking to delegate. And this is an amazing tool that comes with the essentials. When will you need to go to the plus? When you want more users, up to five, and 
when you need to track inventory and when you're going to track project profitability. So when you get to see what I'm going to be sharing about the projects, you make the decision if the plus version is the right one for you. And again, this is the regular pricing. I don't know for some reason this is not doing the math, which it normally does. But the price that you get with this link is 30% off that number that you see there. Yes, I'm posting the link one more time. And here it is. It's either. So I posted the, the bit.ly shortened link for you to get access to the discount. The advance, I won't even touch the advance today, but it's, it is what it's called, advance, you know? It has way more robust pictures. It really depends on the size of your business and what you need. My encouragement is start uh, with the lowest one, and as you need to grow, you can always upgrade, all right? So these are the options when it comes to QuickBooks. There is an addition of QuickBooks self-employed, but that is like a separate app. Um, I won't be discussing that today, but self-employed, if, if you just have a 1099, if you do Uber, if you have this job that they just give you a 1099 at the end of the year, that's one. But for business, this is these are the options. So I'll be sharing here a sample company that I used to do these trainings and to play around with QuickBooks. First thing I wanna point out, QuickBooks recently made a change to the way it's going to look for the business. When you open a new QuickBooks, and I'm gonna switch to the business view so you get to see how it's gonna look like. And I want to point this out. Let me see if it shows. It's actually for new accounts. So this one is new. for new accounts, just to give you the heads up, when you open it, it's not going to look like this. It's just going to have the buttons in different ways, the transactions, the banking. But at least you get the idea of what the features are today. And the tutorials and the trainings that I'll be sharing today are based on the old version, but it's pretty much the same features. I just wanted to give you the heads up because when you register to QuickBooks, you might think that it's a whole different program and it's not. It's, they just made an update, all right? So what do we see here? Pretty much, and let me, okay. We, have, we don't have much time. Let me show you really quickly. In the gear icon, you have access to account and settings. This is where you put the basic information about the company. You can put your logo, some of the features. This, I want to walk you through the payments uh, option. And with QuickBooks Online, you have the option to send invoices, email your invoices, and your clients can pay you directly when they receive that invoice via email with a click. You know, they can just put the credit card, whatever payment information, and you automatically receive the money. It's, it's a merchant service through QuickBooks. It's called QuickBooks Payments. You get charged a percentage of the, the invoice payment but it's like if you were charging through Square or you know, other service provider. So I haven't activated this for this sample company because I want to show you how it will look like when you first set up QuickBooks Payment. It's an application and you have to put this information. They will verify your, your credit history because pretty much this is through a bank that QuickBooks has, okay? You have to put the account when you want your money to get deposited, and you go ahead and activate QuickBooks payments. Again, this is the ability for you to receive payment of your invoices directly through QuickBooks. Very easy tool, and it can be as low as 1% for ACH payments, um, or you could also use another app that is even free if you're doing a business to business. It's called Melio. 
So the reason why I'm pointing this out is because later I'm gonna show you a new tool that's called QuickBooks Cash and it's related with this QuickBooks payment. So in the settings, you can explore, but pretty much is for you activate or deactivate some of the features that you're gonna be using. In the gear icon, you also find how you can manage your users. So remember how some subscriptions have one, some of them has three or five, the advanced has to, up to 25 users, they're here. And the beauty is that you could add accounting firms. So you no longer has to be sharing passwords or bank statements with your accountant. Most likely your accountant is using QuickBooks Online Accountant and you can invite up to two accounting firms to your QuickBooks. And this applies to all subscriptions, okay? Perfect. So, some of the main features because of the lack of time I'm gonna focus on is you can do recurring transactions, you can modify your shark of accounts. This is the skeleton of your accounting. And this is where at the beginning you might need some assistance from an accountant or from one of the consultants, SBDC or Prospera, because this is important to get it right. If you don't get your chart of accounts correctly, everything else is gonna be influenced by that. And what this means is all your income, expenses, your assets and liabilities, this is what gets integrated with all the QuickBooks transactions and what gets your reports, okay? So just so you not have an idea, when you create an account, or you modify an account, this is the format, right? You have to choose what type of account is it, first of all. Am I creating a bank account, an asset, a credit card, a liability? Uh, most of what we have really in a business are expenses. So let's test with an expense account. And then it gives you what type of expense, right? Is it auto? Um, cost of labor, whatever, they give you a whole list. Let's say, and I'm gonna give you this example, you choose an auto expense, but this I wanna use for parking. So you can change the name and you can make parking a sub account of your main expense column truck, which I already have some sub accounts here. You see gas, parking, tools, transportation. So I'm gonna create one for repairs repairs. So for on the current truck, I'm going to create a sub account for repairs. And this is how it looks like in your chart of accounts. Now I have current truck and I added repairs as a sub account. I'm giving you this example so you see how the structure is. Um, you can have sub accounts for insurance. You have out of business liability, workers comp. Uh, even for your income, if you have multiple sources of income, like services, I have bookkeeping, coaching services, tax preparation, just as an example, right? So this is income expenses, your liabilities, mainly your credit card balances, if you have any loan, and your bank is going to show here the QuickBooks balance and the bank balance for purposes of this is not the same. The idea is when your QuickBooks is up to date and reconciled, this balance, this balance should be the same, okay? So let me take you to the banking feature, which is what I mentioned at the beginning is what makes QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Online, <laughs> really what, what makes it easy, right? And here are some, I have some testing accounts to show you how this works. Banking. You sync automatically with your bank, credit card, PayPal, whatever. You click here, link account, and it's gonna prompt you to choose which bank do you wanna connect with. 
And I'm not sure if this is going to be shareable because it gets private, but you choose your bank, you put your username as and password as you enter it in the bank, right? So it connects. And all you're doing is authorizing QuickBooks to get access to the transactions. It doesn't have access to the money. Keep this in mind. There is a lot of security around this. All this does is bring your transactions from your bank, okay? So you can do as many as you have. Uh, and in this case, this is what it did. It brought, here is telling me that I have 912 transactions that I have pending for review. What does that mean? It brought it from my bank. I have to tell them, okay, what type of income or expense was that based on my chart of accounts, so it's linked to that list. And as I categorize them, then they come here to categorize. All right? So I'm going to show you how this works so you have an idea. You can also exclude them, which is not best practice, but if for some reason there is some duplication or, you know, whatever, you could always exclude the transaction. So for review, categorize and exclude it at these tabs that you play with. I want to show you a trick that not many people know. And this is extremely crucial when we're trying to implement QuickBooks and we're trying to catch up with our bookkeeping. You might think 912 transactions, that's a lot. I don't have time for that. Go line by line. You don't have to. That's the beauty of this. In this year icon, you can group, turn on grouping. What this does is group your transactions. And you can group them by date. If you click at the top of the date column, you can group them by date. And then it's going to, you know, whether it's, it's that in the first transaction you have, or if you click on that, it gives you the latest transaction. So it's either up or down. But most importantly, you can group them by description. And this is the beauty of catching up with your QuickBooks using these instead of highlighting bank statements or keeping things in Excel, right? Because when I group by description, this is what happens. Right now there is still, let me really click on description. So you see how it works. Somebody asked in the chat, which one do you start with? I assume which subscription, and it really depends on your needs. If you have a very small business, only one person checking this, checking QuickBooks, you don't need to pay your vendors online. Just start with Simple Start, and then take it from there. Okay. So here, they're linked by description. But look at this. Let's see. And it does from based on alphabetical order, right? So. Let's look at my Airbnb. Oh, they went away because now I put the Z, so I have all the cell. Let me try again. So it goes from A to Z. Because I want to test with, with some of those Airbnb transactions. All right, so Airbnb. This is, in this case, a construction business. They use Airbnb for uh, travel expenses. So I can choose them all. I can choose all of these transactions at the same time. Click update. I can tell QuickBooks, what type of transactions was this? OK, this was an expense. Who was my payee? And this is best practice. It's important that you put the vendor all the time because this allows you to run the right reports. What's the category? Travel. And I could have subcategories for a uh, hotel or lodging. So let me see if I have it. I don't, but you know what? Let me actually show you. You can add a new category directly from here. And I'm gonna do it really quickly. And this is how you build your chart of account. This is an expense. This is a travel expense. 
but I want to change this to hotel. And I want this to be a sub account of the main travel account. So I can create it directly as I'm classifying the transaction. Now it chooses here. Classes and location. This tool is available in the plus subscription. You could, if you have a business that has multiple locations, those business in different states, you could, or you can differentiate Miami versus Broward, you could classify your transactions accordingly. And with the classes, really up to you. I have a, a client that, you know, they, they provide training and they want to differentiate the trainings in the mornings versus afternoon. They have sales reps and they want to differentiate who are your sales representative. You could use classes for that. But most importantly, you can use tags and tags is free not free, but it's included in all three ver versions. But because it's showing here, I want to show you what this means. And I'm going to show you uh, in a little bit how you can use that. So for now, I'm going to leave this blank. We're not going to use class and location for purposes of this classification. You apply and accept. When you do that, all six transactions at the same time, because they're all the same, they're going to be classified. And now they're going to be here in the categorized uh, tab, right? So you see it's added. Let's see where it went. Oh, wait, I'm in a different account. For some reason, I ended up in the credit card. But in the West File, go categorize. Now all these Airbnb are here. But most importantly, let me show you really quickly how you can create a role. And you can tell QuickBooks for recurring transactions, for transactions that are repetitive. You know, I, not Amazon, because in Amazon, you can see this business buys a lot on Amazon. But for Amazon, you can buy different things. So you don't want to create a rule because the expense could be different. But let's say for, let's pretend that Apple is just a subscription, right? A subscription service. So I can, Click on any of these transactions. And keep in mind, QuickBooks kind of give you a category, a category or give you an uncategorized expense. This is just QuickBooks guessing what it is, but don't go by it. You have to classify it. But look, you can create a role and you're going to tell QuickBooks, this is for Apple subscription. I'm going to call my pro Apple subscription. And I'm telling QuickBooks, every time there is money out from this checking account, and I can choose one or all, or if I use multiple accounts for the same payment, I can choose multiple. But in this case, every time there's money out from my West Fargo and the description contains Apple, I want you to put it as an expense. I want you to put it as a subscription. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna create an account now, but let me just put utilities for now so I don't create another account. I'm just gonna put here this part of the company phone. It's just to test, right? The payee is Apple, and we're gonna be talking about classes and locations sooner, but. Uh, you could also put the tag here in the rule. And I'm going to tell QuickBooks, when all these conditions are met, I want you to automatically confirm transactions and add it to my books. Automatic. What that means is that all these 26 Apple transactions, 26 transactions have been added to your books. Now they're going to be in the confirm tab. And keep in mind, not until you classify, not until you add them to your books, they're going to show you reports. This is just a tool for you to classify. But you have to literally do it so then you, they go into QuickBooks itself. So now they're categorized, the Apple transactions. And now it's telling me that they were added auto-added as part of the rule. 
And most importantly, in the future, when they charge me again for Apple, it will automatically go to categorize. I'm not gonna see it here for review. So the reason why I spend this time showing you this tool is because this itself is gonna save you a lot of time, <laughs> all right? So now I'm gonna move a little bit more faster to show you some other features because again, this is something that I could do in a series of workshops or some sort of accelerator program to really dig deeper into all of this, but just so you have an idea, all right? Perfect. So we spoke about rules. Whenever you sync your QuickBooks to an app, the transactions from the app are going to show here. So you can sync to Amazon Business if you saw through Amazon, through Square. And it's cool because it separates what's banking and what came through the app. We spoke about the rules. So the rules itself, as you create them, they're going to show here. You can create them directly from banking or you can create them from the rules tab. So now this rule that I just created for Apple is here and I have a few more uh, to, for testing. The tags, this is an amazing tool that's available in all subscriptions starting from the simple start. And it allows you to keep better track of certain details for your business so you can make decisions accordingly. You remember how I mentioned you can use locations for Broward versus Miami or whatnot. You could always use tax as well. This is something that QuickBooks added uh, about a year ago for all subscriptions. So this is giving you the example. You can separate what's residential versus commercial. If you have a gym, separate yoga classes versus aerobics. I have a client that they sell horses and they want to differentiate the professors, they have the list of all the teachers and they want to know who is doing what. So this is how it works. You can create a new tag group, right? And let's pretend you are in the construction industry and you want to separate commercial versus residential. So you're going to put job type as the group. And then in the tag name, you're going to put commercial add it. Oh, this already exists because maybe I was testing it. Uh, you know, let me put something else. I'm going to edit the type and I'm going to put sales rep, right? Let's say you work with sales representative and you want to know how they're performing. So here I put Jose and John, right? So just so you see how the tag works, all your transactions where you create an invoice, an expense, when you classify from banking, you see that the transactions, you can add your tag. And that way you can run reports for tag. How much John sold versus uh, the rest of the sales rep? How much work do I have in commercial versus residential? You can make the tags whatever you want, really. And it gives you insights because it has specific reports. But when you click on the transaction to classify, here you see that you can put your tag. And it's going to give you the list based on how you've been created. So this is tax. And the receipts, it's an amazing tool because as I told you, I use the app to take pictures of it. But you could also blow the receipt from your computer, from Google Drive. You can set up an email where you can forward all your receipts to a specific email address from QuickBooks. And everything that you send to that email, it will automatically come here. All the receipts that you whether take pictures or upload, they're going to come here for review, right? And once you modify it and link it to a specific transaction, then they come here review. What does that mean? And the receipts get erased over time and you lose them. You can just have them here electronically and just like that. All right. So really quickly, I'm going to talk to you about the projects because this applies to many industries. 
and it really depends how you want to run your business, right? But for example, I use this as an example in my last QuickBooks class. Uh, let's pretend I'm in the construction industry and I'm gonna start a new project at a restaurant. Restaurant. And I get, you know, I did the bidding process. I gave the client, you know, I choose my customer from here. And if I don't have any, I add you know, the test here as my customer. So I'm doing a, a restaurant for this specific customer. What this does, each project allows you to add to the project, like since the get go, you do an estimate for that project or multiple. You do invoicing under the project, the expenses, the payments, you keep track of time per project and do the billing as well. And this allows you to know exactly how much income, expenses, and most importantly, profit you have in that project. It will give you the detail of the transactions. So let me, oh. I feel like an hour is nothing to teach you QuickBooks. <laughs> but uh, let me show you really quickly. Let's pretend we're creating an invoice, right? And what we're gonna do is the invoice is going to this project of the restaurant. Uh, we have to choose what specific service we're providing, but let's just put hours for now. And let's say that we're charging um, for the portion of this project, $5,000. Here's where you can save or send it via email. What I told you at the beginning that the client can send you via email if you activate payments, or just save and close. Or save and share the link as well so they can pay you via the link. So now the income starts showing up, right? In transactions, you see that now you have an invoice here. So all your transactions, invoices, estimates, bills, expenses, everything is gonna show per project. Now let's see that what I showed you earlier about banking. Uh, you wanna categorize really quickly one transaction because it can be connected through, everything is connected, this is a video of that. But let's pretend that this expense in the auto parts, I'm going to assign it to that project because it was an expense related to that. So I'm going to put repairs and maintenance. I'm going to choose here my project, the restaurant. All right. When I add this, when I add this, and this is okay, uh, you go to projects, and now that expense. When I go to the restaurant project, it's categorized here, my $56. So you see how everything is connected? This is eye-opening in profitability per project. Looking at your profit and loss for the whole business is another story, but you can look at the project report, and this is going to be if you have profit and loss per project, all right, to see if you're either making or losing money. So that's the beauty of the projects feature. And uh, you, these projects is available in the plus subscription, okay? Uh, please show a detail on the sales invoice again. Diane, uh, this is, the invoicing is an amazing feature for QuickBooks. What I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna be sharing tutorials and trainings that you could dig deeper on how to do the invoice and step-by-step step because I know it's a lot to take on. But in the next few minutes, I just wanna give you a little bit more pointers of other features so you get, you get to understand what you can get out of QuickBooks, okay? There's one extremely important feature that not everywhere is, is aware and is very new. And for those of you that are related with the profit first, methodology and if you haven't i would encourage you to read the book because it's a very good tool to manage your cash flow uh, the idea is that you know let me just put it this way as human beings we make for the most part financial decisions based on how much money we have in the bank account 
Do I have $5,000? Okay, I'm gonna buy that computer. Do I have $100? No, I'm not gonna eat that ice cream. I'm gonna save it for later. That's how we operate. How we, that's how we're wired. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for us long-term when we're just making financial decisions based on how much money we have there because we don't know if that money is compromised for something else. So the idea of the Profit First methodology is that you're going to separate that money. Don't leave it all in a bank account. Don't leave it there so you just see the balance and start spending it. Put a name to it. Like our grandma, our mothers used to do back in the days and save the money in a separate envelope or on the mattress. QuickBooks, QuickBooks Cash, when you activate QuickBooks payments and you apply for the QuickBooks Cash, this is like QuickBooks having their own bank, right? QuickBooks Cash is a business checking account with QuickBooks. You're gonna get a debit card and you could pretty much just a bank account, right? But the beauty, of this bank is that it allows you to create envelopes, right? So you can, and in this case, you can transfer money to outside accounts or to envelopes and save for expenses, which is the idea. So these are some of the envelopes I created to show you based on the profit first methodology. I wanna have an envelope for operating expenses, owner's compensation, profit that we, for the most part, don't see a profit, but read the book, I would say. Save for taxes, in this case, save if you wanna hire new employees, start saving for it. And instead of creating five or seven separate checking accounts, you can create the envelopes because it's all integrated within the QuickBooks Cash account. So this is just an overview, but I wanted to point this out because it's pretty new and it's an amazing tool for you to manage your cash flow. All right, so go back to the sample company really quickly. Oh, we don't have, we're running out of time. I think I'm gonna have to take questions now, um, but really quickly, let me then show you the reports because this is what we do, what we do, uh, why we wanna keep track of all these transactions so we get to see our profit and loss, our balance sheet. These are the basic reports, right? But you have a whole access to reporting who owes you, like you could see how much money you have pending to collect versus your invoices, your profit by customer, by location, by tag. Remember what I told you about the tags? You can see how much money you are pending to collect, your sales reports, all type of sales by, by all type of things, 1099, expenses, employees, and payroll, by the way, is a separate subscription with QuickBooks Online. You can still get the, the discount with the link that I sent you, but it's a separate subscription. The beauty of QuickBooks Payroll with a system like QuickBooks is that they take care of everything for you. You have to set it up. You could do it with the support of one of our consultants, but all you have to do to run payroll is click and they pay your taxes on your behalf. They send the paperwork to all the agencies. They send you the W-2 at the end of the year. So all that is included in the cost of your subscription and the payroll core would do all of that. So is the the lowest subscription of these QuickBooks, that's enough for what you need, okay? So, uh, I do have a long list, but I was very, um, I guess, optimistic with how much I can cover in one hour. I think I'm gonna cover a few questions in the five minutes that we have left. And I will leave this open in case I have to show you here. Let's see. Uh, what do you recommend regarding shadow of accounts for our business that does B2C and B2B? The beauty of the short of accounts is that it's so modifiable. Really, you can make out of the short of accounts whatever you want it to make. 
to adapt it to your business. So what it takes, Harold, for that is I will need to get a better understanding of your business structure so I can guide you on what type of accounts and how to create both main and sub accounts. Because if you notice, the options are endless. When you create a new account, it has all type of things you can choose from. Uh, the list is, you know, it really, you, you can adapt it to your business whatever works for you and you can modify the names, the structure, and that way you're going to see your profit and loss and your, uh, you know, with all your income and expenses aligned as you want them to analyze them. At all. So if you are not registered with the SBDC, I would say sign up and request a consultation so we can guide you one-on-one -on -one to structure your chart of accounts correctly. Okay. Uh, Diane, uh, maybe I have time to show you the invoice again if nobody else has another question. But, or I could cover, I want to show you on the reporting really quickly. This is something that not many people take advantage of. And this is what gives you the ability to make decisions, right? Let's say you're running a profit and loss. And this is based on the transactions that are already classified. Uh, you could compare, let's see, um, I wanna do a profit and loss for this year. And I wanna see it monthly. And you can even compare with the prior period by year, by percentage, all of this is adjustable, right? When you run the report, it gives you the numbers on a monthly basis. And this is, again, there's not much data here because it's a sample company, but this is the beauty of this tool. at the end of the day. And we learned the importance of having these reports available to get access to capital, to do your taxes accordingly, but most importantly, to understand how your business is doing and make decisions accordingly. Uh, Really quickly, I want to share some of the common mistakes that I see people making in QuickBooks. And I want to kind of give you the heads up, all right? When you receive a payment, let's say you're creating an invoice. And here in sales, you create an invoice. Uh, Diane, maybe I'll give you an idea of when you asked me to go over the invoicing again. Sales. Let's see my computer is even slow. Sales. All right. So in sales, you can see all sales, but let's say I'm going to. I created this invoice for the restaurant, right? And here. I put that I received the payment of the invoice. When you mark that you receive the payment, you got to make sure that you deposited that payment to undeposited funds. Don't put it directly to the bank account that it went to. Now everything is automatic, but re think of it like if you got the check and you have it on at home and you have to go to the bank and deposit it, right? It's still not deposited. Why? Because when I put it, when I go to banking, let's say now I go to my banking and I got the $5,000 clear and deposited in my, in my bank account. I don't know if I'm gonna have a specific transaction, but I could sort here by received. Um, and let me just use the example with any money received here. When you receive the deposit in your bank account and you had already created an invoice for it and you mark the invoice as paid and you put it in undeposited funds, you have to come here. And I don't have a $5,000 one, but oh, I do. Look, I have a deposit for $5,000. Let's pretend this was it. I have to come and I have to find a match 
Do not categorize it and add it on sales again, because if you do, and in this case, I'm gonna spam the dates because I created the because the index today. Uh, I'm gonna find the match. So now it's gonna find that I made this payment and I wanna match this to the deposit that the invoice that I pay. Why this is so important? If you don't, you're gonna have a duplication of your income. Okay, it's gonna mark yourself when you mark the deposit as pay, the invoice as pay. It's gonna add yourselves when you add add again the deposit through banking. So this is a common common mistake that duplicate your income. Extremely important. Okay, something happened here. Let me just cancel it because you have the idea. Matching transactions with income and with expenses if you're using bills. Matching the transfers. If you're transferring from one account to the other, you can do the transfers here as well, but make sure you match one transfer to the other in the account. Um, that's a very common mistake. And um, the other one, which Many of you as small businesses received a loan through the SBA or whatever programs have come as part of this pandemic. Make sure you record it as a liability and not an income because it's money that you have to pay back. And that would need to be another class. <laughs> Sorry, I, I have a lot to cover, but I only have one hour. Any other questions? See, I'm gonna put at the end, let me share my con uh, the contact information so you can contact the center if you wanna receive additional guidance from one of our consultants. And let's see, let me just share. And I'm gonna share the resources really quickly in the chat. These resources that I'm sharing with everybody, the first one is access to your Miami-Dade public library system where you can get a, access to a complete QuickBooks training and it's free when you use your library card. The second one is some tutorials that I have recorded, like five minutes tutorials that show you step by step on how to complete tasks in QuickBooks. And I have them both in English and Spanish. You can find them on the website. The third one is a uh, link to a sample company of QuickBooks. So you can play with your QuickBooks, uh, explore it in a sample company and without kind of messing up your own books. And the fourth one is the discount again. So you can get a QuickBooks discount for 12 months at 30% off. All right. And this is- Yes, I have, a, I have a question for you. Um, do you have any quick um, takeaways or key key takeaways for the participants to, uh, to walk away from today's presentation? The main thing I would say is that as an entrepreneur, I started supporting my parents with their own business and my family businesses 15 years ago. And it was so eye-opening when I learned about the resources available in our community and how we don't have to do this alone. So SBDC, Prospera, and many other organizations, we're here to help you. What you get out of this presentation is just the basics but you can get one-on-one -on -one support to implement these processes, to learn more about it, to see how you can adjust it to your business. The main thing that I can advise you and just reinforce is ask for help. Ask for help and be open to receive it because there is a lot of resources. So that is commendable for you being here today, but it doesn't stop here. Please use us and learn from us and get the support that, that you deserve as the entrepreneur. Awesome, and then I also have a question from uh, um, Umberto um, saying that, how can you register a bank fee on the, in QuickBooks? How can you register a bank fee? Yeah, an internal transfer based on the funds. 
internal transfers. Yes, when, oh, do I have time to show you or? Yes, you can. Okay, <laughs> I don't mind spending a few more minutes. Let me show you really quickly. I'm gonna share. And then uh, as uh, Yasne is pulling up, I'm, I'm gonna um, provide you a poll of how was today's uh, presentation um, and how we could definitely enhance your experience. Um, like I said, the, the webinar will be uploaded on the YouTube page as well, and uh, today's presentation as well. So like that, if you miss any slides or want to touch back in a particular part, by all means, um, we're more than happy to, to give you this, um, this presentation um, from the assistants from Tospeda, from Yasne, from our center, the Florida SBC Network, and the Florida SBC at FIU. And along with the uh, Building Prosperity Initiative from, from J.P. Morgan Chase and, and Miami Foundation. Awesome. So what I did here, Umberto, I just filtered by transfer to find a quick transaction. And let's say this transfer was done from the business checking account to the personal. Or let's pretend that it was from the business to the savings and the transaction is here. So you would instead of categorizing or finding a match, you will record a transfer. And then you have to choose to which account you're transferring it to, right? So you're gonna have, let's pretend that I transfer it from West Fargo to Bluevine. You choose the account and you add it, right? Now, what happens, you have to come to Bluevine and find the transfer, which in this case, it's not gonna work because it, it was not that transfer, but let's pretend when you get here, you gotta make sure that you match, which in this case is not the version we're trying to do, but you, QuickBooks is gonna recognize, I found a match. And, it's, and that match is gonna be that transfer that came from the other account. And then you match it, right? So you, you initiate the transfer from one account and from the second account, you match it. That's how you do it internally within QuickBooks if both accounts are here. But if you're transferring from a business checking account to a personal account, let's say it's your owner's compensation outside of payroll, you could put transfer and then choose, let's see, uh, let me choose this as an example, even though this is a small amount, but you could record a transfer and then let's see that I'm transferring to owners uh, pay and personal expenses, right? And that way it's gonna start accumulating in your equity account. So that's pretty much, you use the, the transfer function for all of that. And then the last one is a credit card payment. For credit cards, whenever you are recording a payment, this is what you wanna use. So it reduces your balance, all right? All right. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Yes, Nay. Um, so like I said, if you have any additional questions, concerns, don't hesitate. Um, give, give us a call. Like I said, we're family. Um, we'll be more than happy to assist you with any small business needs. And, um, and thank you for attending and uh, looking forward to seeing you at the next uh, webinar. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. No problem.